it's really great feeling talking to you again and as always I would like to say thank you for interaction on my previous videos and I really hope that you're doing great guys. So my today's topic is preparation for navigational flights. Well, basically why I chose this topic is because I received your questions regarding what was the hardest part of my training um, as well, what took the most time for me and as well what was the most rewarding part of my private pilot training. So combining all those questions, the answer to them would be navigational flights. Well, for me personally, the navigation flight itself wasn't as hard as preparation for it, as I remember that sometimes it really, really took a lot of time for me. Um, sometimes three, four hours, sometimes I needed to collect some data a day before the flight. So it is really, really important to prepare well for it, uh, to do uh, your calculations as uh, precisely as possible. Uh, and once you see in flight that your calculations are actually working, then you can really feel way more chilled and relaxed and just enjoy the flight. As I so um, I, will talk into, I will be talking today about uh, how I prepare for, for my flights as uh, rules at different flight schools can be slightly different. So I will give you today my point of view, um, uh, what is uh, good preparation for that flight. So the first thing uh, what I needed to do is to check the weather. Of course, you need to be sure that all the time when you will be commencing your flight, you will be in visual meteorological conditions. Uh, it includes your departure airdrome, arrival airdrome, as well as uh, route, uh, weather and route, as well as alternate airdrome. So you really, really want that uh, weather to be in VMC. Um, once you're sure about that, then you can actually start checking the relevant documents. Um, I always started from AIP, it is Aeronautical uh, Information Publication, as here you can find uh, the information which uh, every state publishes and which differs uh, from ICAO standard and recommended practices. So those variations are actually based on the national law and you really want to know the law uh, at which uh, state you are flying. As well, it contains really vital data such as uh, information about aerodromes, uh, navigational aids, uh, all the aeronautical charts, and I needed to print uh, all aeronautical charts uh, uh, of those aerodromes at which I will be flying, or as well alternate aerodromes. As well, I needed to have uh, aerodrome charts uh, for the aerodromes which are close by my route in case of uh, diversion or something like that. So. AAP is really a holy bible for every pilot and it has to be checked carefully. Um, the second thing uh, which I needed to check uh, uh, was AUB. This is Airspace Users Plan and it contains um, information regarding active areas such as TSAs, TRAs, METZs as well as active military routes and uh, here you can check the validity times of those areas as well as uh, vertical limits because lateral limits you can see on your aeronautical chart. Well, it is really important to know if that area is active because once it is being used you cannot enter this area and you need to fly or uh, below or above it, of course, if it is possible. So make sure you do not cross that active area and uh, you really checked AAPs. Um, what as well I needed to check before every flight was notums, um, notices to airmen. Uh, here you can find the slightly different information, uh, but as well very very important and vital, such as runway, taxiway closures, as well uh, maybe some navigational aids are not working, maybe some frequencies change. Um, as well, here you can find increased bird activity, flights of important persons like presidents and uh, prime ministers. Um, as well, it is important to know if in your, at, at your route won't be um, active parachute jump, jumpings, uh, as well as glider flights. So, notums as well, uh, you can print and have it on board uh, if it is needed for you. No one says that you cannot do it. So once you check those documents and you're sure that uh, you can really commence your flight and uh, uh, you will be safe, 
uh, then you can actually start planning your route. For me, this part was the most enjoyable as I really, really liked to draw those legs on the maps and make those calculations. And um, as well, uh, I will show you how I do it in, in this video later on. And as well, I will try to show um, how to fill a navigational log. So here we go. So what you see here is Poland via Fire Aeronautical Chart. This is uh, the sector of Krakow. Really sorry, Polish people, for my pronunciation. And what I want to show here is one of my last navigational flights. I did it solo, I remember. It generated me so much memories. It was really, really amazing flight. And uh, I want to show you uh, what information on the chart really helped me in flight. So I'll start with this big wind arrow here. Uh, here you see the arrow which represents magnetic wind. Um, you can find the wind information from Gamet, but here, um, don't mislead, you will find information, uh, true wind information, and then you need to check on the chart what is the magnetic variation. So here you see this dashed line, and here the number 5 east means, means the magnetic variation is 5 degrees east. So then you subtract, subtract uh, that number, and then you cont uh, have the magnetic wind. So here the ma magnetic wind is from 280 degrees and uh, speed 20 knots. Uh, here the wind is at 2000 feet and as well what you can do is to represent wind speed in those dashes. Here one dash represents uh, 10 knots, so it's totally 20 knots. Why it is needed is basically because it's very important on each leg, here those lines uh, are legs, on each leg it is important to know from where the wind is coming from in order to know how to correct your heading. Uh, so what as well you see here are those black houses. This looks quite funny, but uh, I remember my instructor all the time said to draw them because um, it takes less space from the chart and as well, it is important to, it contains important information and as well captures your attention way more. So first number, what I wrote here was the number of the leg. Second, uh, the magnetic heading. Um, you can have uh, the magnetic heading uh, once you've done your old calculations. And the last number is our minutes. As well, you can write altitude. For example, on this house, I wrote altitude because it differs from my old route. Uh, what else you can see here are frequencies here 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 and uh, as well it represents the actual place when you need to switch the frequency for example here you see the airspace of Kilice and before entering the, this airspace you need to be sure to contact the tower or radio or whatever and uh, say import uh, import your position and make sure that you write frequencies in very um, small marker as well that it, uh, the color of it differs from the chart. For example, I think that the black here really captures the attention and make sure that the marker is permanent to not, not to be easily removed. What you can see as well are those purple fuel marks. Um, flying Techno Pop of the 1002 Juliet Foxtrot, uh, almost every 30 minutes I needed to switch fuel tanks from left to right, from right to left, because uh, in order to be stable all the time in flight. Of course, different aircraft uh, requires different positions, but in my case it was exactly like that. Uh -huh. What as well I like to draw on my chart was radials. For every point I collected radials from the closest VORs, in order to cross-check your position, to be sure that you really arrive at your selected point, as well in case you get lost, to have radial is really, really vital, so I think it's a good choice to put them on the chart. Okay guys, so at uh, the later on I will show you how to actually plan this route, how to do calculations, and how to fill a nav log. So what we have here is, again, Poland via fire chart. In this case, it is Wasa sector. And let's fly today a simple route from Eko Papa Lima Lima Romeo to Eko Papa Papa Tango, then to Opocno, Konskie, and again back to Piotkov. So the first thing, what you need to do 
is to take your navigation log and write your route here in this section. What you have to do with the chart is to measure the true track, what it is. You take a beautiful device called plotter and then you measure the true track. You align this device with the line you draw, uh, then you rotate the circle until it meets and is parallel with the lines of the chart, those black lines you see here. And then you read this scale. You read this scale, not this scale, because you're traveling this direction. So in this case, it is 155 degrees. And in the first section, you write 155 degrees. Second thing is magnetic track. A magnetic track can be easily found, as you can see the magnetic variation at your chart. It is those dashed lines. And it is set 5 degrees east. So if it is east, we have to subtract it from our true track and then we receive a magnetic track of 150 degrees. In this case, we have to remember that east is least, west is best. That means west is plus and east is minus. So the second thing is wind correction angle. This angle you find from another beautiful device called flight computer. Here it is. And actually, the rules are very simple how to use it. Everything is written here. Um, it's very clear instruction, and you should easily find wind correction angle as well as ground speed. So once you find it, you write it here. Let's say today wind correction angle is 10 degrees east. So again, if it is east, that means it's least. That means 150 minus 10 is equal to 140. And then we receive magnetic heading. Um, this number is really important as you write this number on your chart and actually fly in aircraft this heading. Second part is compass heading. Um, you have to check in order to find this heading your flight manual and see uh, what is the deviation of your compass. Let's say in this case it is plus 2 degrees. So it means 140 plus 2 is 142 degrees. Next, we measure the distance between the points we drew. We take again the plotter, uh, find the nautical mile scale on it. It is here. And measure the distance. It is 70 nautical miles. So this number we write here. And uh, next part is ground speed. We found the ground speed when calculating which wind correction angle from our flight computer. So let's say uh, we found that it is 90 knots. So we will uh, write 90 here. Uh, what we do next is calculate our estimated time in route. For each leg, you have to calculate how much time it will take when flying. So what we do is we, divi uh, we divide 70 by 90, and then we multiply the found value by 60, and then we get minutes. So in this case, it will be 11 minutes. ATE is actual time in route. This uh, you leave blank, as you need to write the information when you're actually flying in the aircraft. Um, when you arrive at Romeo point, you put the stopwatch at your aircraft and you actually check how this leg until Piotkov takes and write actual time in route here. Second part is minimum sector altitude. It's those big magenta numbers here. And uh, you have to know that this number uh, takes nine fields. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the most appropriate number to our root is this one, as our root is here in this square. So our minimum sector altitude would be 1.5. And we write it here. The last part is plant altitude. Uh, you check um, the air spaces and uh, you select the altitude, which is the most appropriate for you. 
I always like to take 2,000 feet, as this route, uh, as always, it allowed me. So you're right, 2,000 feet here. This navlog as well contains other important information, such as alternate airports. Here you as well write uh, the same, like a road here, like a road here. Um, here is the fuel calculation part, um, and you find total required fuel, total usable fuel. Um, this is mass and balance appendix. Um, in my flight school, I needed to have a separate mass and balance sheet and calculate the data on separate paper. But you can do it as well here if your navlock contains this. So here at this section, you can see takeoff and landing performance section. Um, here we have to calculate takeoff and landing distances for each runway of each airport. That means your destination, arrival, air, uh, destination, departure, airdrome, as well as any en route airdromes, as well as alternate airdromes. And uh, you can find the performance data of your aircraft at uh, aircraft flight manual document. And one of the last parts are navigational flight checklists. Here are here is information which you must uh, must have before commencing a navigational flight, and you need to make sure that everything is printed, everything is checked, what's written here as well. Here is a document checklist. You must have those documents or on board. And the last part is signature of your flight instructor. So. After completing this, you give it to check to your flight instructor, and then you can, if you do it everything successfully, be happy and enjoy your navigational flight. So that's it, guys, for now. I really, really hope you liked the video, and as always, feel free to ask any questions, comment, share your thoughts and opinions, and I hope I see you next time. So for now, have a wonderful day and bye bye.